ones that didn't get done yet. Okay, and this chart is available on Canvas for you guys in your lesson three module now. So if you want to practice by printing off a blank one and filling it in for yourself, that's a good way to practice. Okay, you can print off as many blanks and fill it in as many times as you want for practice. And if you want to, you could use this in your own template and type in your answers and save it someplace and then have it as like a reference sheet for the future. And then you could add to it, add more verbs on the list as you go with time. And then as we add more categories of conjugation, you could add this direction as well. Yes, all of these are on the next test. Yes. Both, you know, in context for the most part. I don't remember if I've got a chart on there or not. But um, for sure, in context, you'll need to be able to use all of these in sentences. Okay, so let's start with the ones that are actually written. Okay, so kaeru is what kind of verb? Check if you don't remember. First, let's talk for a second about what those three categories are. Ru, u, and irregular, right? It's ru, right? Kairu, you would think so, because it ends with a ru. But guess what? There are some u verbs in disguise that end in ru, but they're not ru verbs. That's cheating. Yes, it is. <laughs> but we're stuck with it. So kairu happens to be one of those. Okay. Kairu is actually an u verb. Okay. Let's just go down the list. Nomu doesn't end in ru, so it has to be an. Uber, right? Yomu, same deal. Okidu? It's a ruver, yes. Okay. Neru? Ru. Right. Taberu? Ru. Miru? Ru. Kuru? Irregular. To do? Irregular. To study? Irregular. Irregular. Okay. Sure. Up here, to go, yeah. ooh, right? And to listen, yeah. ooh. And to speak, yeah. ooh. Okay, so these are actually grouped. Okay. For practice sake, you might want to sometimes scramble the list around and not group all the oohs and roos and regulars together. But for this particular exercise, I went ahead and grouped them. Okay, so going back up to kaeru, let's change the color. So what's missing in here? Anybody? Ri. Ri, yes, kaerimas. And kaerimasen. Why? Does anybody understand why? Okay, so it, it, oo verbs end in something that's got an oo sound, right? So ku, gu, su, su, um, nu, um, fu doesn't actually exist, but gu does. the only endings there are for verbs, okay? Ru verbs always end in ru, and kudu and sudu both end in ru, okay? So that's basically it for verb endings for the dictionary forms, okay? So in the case of u verbs, what do they each change to in, in order to connect to a mas or masen ending? The e form. The e form. So ku changes to? Ki. Gu? Su, chi, su, chi, nu, ni, bu, bi, mu, mi, and ru, ri. So that's 
that's it. I really can't think of any verbs that end with anything other than those. Okay? So it'll, it'll always change to the A form regardless of the ending? Or? Right. It, for now, for all the ones that end in mas, all the verbs that are uverb in the category to make the future positive, the present slash future positive, and the present slash future negative, they're always going to change this way. Okay? Um, these collectively are sometimes referred to as the mas forms because they the first one is ma su ending, right? Ma sen. The other two that we'll learn later are ma sha, ma sen deshta, and then later we'll learn another one, ma shol. But they all start with a ma, okay, in the, the, that suffix. So mas forms in general always follow these rules. Later we'll learn other things that do other rules. But for now, boot to eat is the only rule you need right now for the uverbs, okay? Okay, so all of the uverbs follow this pattern. What's the rule for the ruverbs? Well, how do they change? Just drop the ru and add the mas or the masen. Okay, so just drop. That's all you have to do for that. What about the irregulars? Just add mas. Not quite. Kudu, kumas, no. So what do they do? You drop the ru and you change to the e also. So the irregulars are almost like a hybrid of the ru and the u. You're applying both rules to the same verb. Weird, right? But that's a good way to think about it, about it though, because then you don't get stuck on but what does it change to? Kudu changes to kimas, kimasen, right? Sudu is going to change to, what's sudu going to change to? Shimas. Shimas and shimasen. shimasen. Are they, do they always um, end in rhythm, the irregulars? Or? There, there are only these two irregulars. That's it. The, that's this one same. is sudu added on to Benkyo. I mean just like just from what we're studying or like in general? Forever. Forever. Like, this is it. That's the only irregular verb. It's these two and then compounds that end with these. That's this is a compound word. Benkyo sudu. Benkyo by itself has a meaning but to make it into a verb in Japanese they had to add sudu so that it would be conjugatable. Okay? There are words that take kudu as a suffix and they conjugate as kudu does. You keep the compound, if you're sticking in a compound here, you keep the compound and you conjugate the ending only. Okay? Make sense? So basically, if you know how to conjugate those two irregular verbs, you know how to conjugate all the irregular verbs in the language. That's awesome. Even though you haven't learned all the irregular yet. <laughs> cool, right? Very. So what you're left with is two categories of major types of verbs other than the two irregulars. Okay? So you've got u verbs and you've got ru verbs. Okay? All of the ru verbs, as you can see, follow the same pattern. Okiru, okimasu, okimasen. Neru, nemasu, nemasen. Taberu, tabemasu, tabemasen. Miru, imasu, imasen. Right? They all follow the same pattern. Drop the root, add mas or masen. Any problems? So the only ones that are a little bit tricky are the uverbs. And part of what makes them tricky is just the fact that they've got some uverbs that are disguising themselves by ending with ru, right? But kairu, kairimasu, kairimasen, we figured that one out. Nomu, nomimas, nomimasen. There you go. Yomu, yomumas. Yeah, no. So what do we change it to? That's right. Okay. So yomimas, yomimasen. See, now you know, right? Okay. So hanasu to speak, 
right? So what are we going to change it to? Hana su. Hana shi ma su. And? Hana shi ma sen. Right? Okay, to listen is? Who can tell me? So it changes to? Ikimasu. And? Ikimasen. Right? And to go, I'm going to write it over here because I can't reach that high. So to go is? Iku. Right? So it changes to? Ikimasu. And Ikimasen. So, did anyone notice that once you get to the ma part, you're home free, right? If it's ma su ending, it's positive. If it's ma sen ending, it's negative. And that's consistent regardless of what kind of verb it is, right? There's no inconsistency on those, right? The only place where you have to be careful is converting between dictionary form and must form, back and forth, right? If you've got this form and you want to get to here, or if you've got this form and you want to get to here, what one piece of information will let you be sure you're doing that correctly? What group it belongs to, right? If you know the dictionary form and whether it's irregular, u, or du, you can figure out the mas form, right? If you know the mas form and what group it is, you can figure out the dictionary form, right? If you know the mas form and the dictionary form, you can figure out what group it is, right? So if you have two out of the three of those pieces of information and you know what your rules are, you can figure out the third missing piece, am I right? And once you're here with a mas ending, all you have to do is change the su to sen and you've got the negative, right? Okay, so does that make sense? I'll leave that up here in case anybody wants to either copy it or take a picture of it. Okay. So, okay, while well, everybody's digesting that a little bit, um, let's do some vocabulary and radical review real quick. So, first of all, radicals, who remembers this one? Battle axe, yes. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. No, I, <laughs> did, did you get me in it? Or? Yeah, I actually I dro almost dropped my phone and then. Oh, uh, yeah. it's Okay. What's this one? I. I. Good. What's this one? Here. Here. Foot. 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 Yeah. Gold. Gold. Door. 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 Short tailed bird. Short tailed bird, yes. Rain. 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 Horse. Horse. Uh, right. Power. Power. Strength. <laughs> Woman. Yeah. Or right hand. Right hand, yep. Also, again. No, no, no. Mouth. Yeah, oh. this is the mouth one. It's I know, it's hard to tell when they're not side by side. Sun. Oh. Sun. Moon. Moon. Tree. Tree. Field. Field. Speech. Speech, or to say. Is it field or rice field? Rice field, but, you know, field. Yeah. Yeah, when you consider that most fields were rice fields, you know. Uh, shell, yes, this is shell, powery shell. Walk. Walk or run. Enclosure. Enclosure. See how much bigger it is? Soil. Soil. was more like rectangular. Enclosure, maybe a tad more rectangular. It's just larger also. Um, the mouth is a tad smaller. Sunlight. Sunset. Sunset. Yeah. Sunset or evening, twilight. This big. 
Yes, big, large, great. Woman. Child. Inch. Ah, both of these are? Heart. Heart. Yeah, the sideways heart and the full form heart. What? Work, labor. labor. Yeah. Small. Small. Uh, teeny tiny. tiny. Yeah, this yeah. one's tiny. Bow. Bow. This one is? Um, small. Small also, right? Okay. Hand. Hand. Person, person. person and the other person, yeah. Knife. Knife. The two knife. versions of knife. Water. Water, water. the two water. versions of water. Yeah. Um, display. God. Display show. or show, yeah, to show. Not and like a physical display, but like to show something. To show somebody something, yeah. Wait, just go ahead and I get that wrong. Both of these are versions of the same thing. So this is what, when it's like the, the either the whole character or say the bottom half of a character, it would be this form. When it's one side of the character, it would be this form. But they mean the same thing. Okay, and it means um, to show? To show, Okay. yeah. And I think you're right, this is the side of the god one. Is that what, so I heard somebody say God. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, this is one half of God. <laughs> okay. No. Eat. Eat. The other, the other version of eat. The sideway, this one side, one half of a character part. Um, fire. No. No, it's. Is that clothing? Clothing, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the one that's clothing. I'm thinking, like, kimono display. Yeah, kimono, okay. yeah. Well, and kimono, if you translate it very literally, is just thing to wear. <laughs> that's literally what kimono translates as, if you that's, look at the kanji for it. Um, very fine small. Silk. Fine silk. Fine silk. This is tiny and small, fine silk. So, and that's the, the um, other version of fine silk. Fire. 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 And that's the bottom fire, and this is the main fire. Okay. So let's do some vocab real quick. Some of these may be review. Some of these are easier than others. Kogi. Kayu. We just conjugated it, but do you remember it? To return, as in go home to a place where you belong. Kaeru. To drink. No move. To drink. Yeah. Is that every day? Hi, okaeru nasai. Welcome home. Yes, it is from that same root word. Very good. Kaerimas. Okaeru nasai. They are from the same root. Kaeru. You remember that phrase for welcome home? Yeah, so it's, it's literally like welcome back to the place where you belong. Okay, this is? Every day. Nichi yobi. Not every day, but. Every night? No. It's one of the days of the week. Sunday. Yes, okay. Sunday. Nichi yobi. Oh, even. Sun. Yeah, it's literally sun day. Nichi is one of the readings for that sun character. Chocho is a little bit. Little, but, however, yes. Hi, Toki Doki. Sometimes, yes. Hi, so this. That is so. Like, I. It's usually agreeing with somebody. Like somebody else says, Oishi desu ne. This is delicious, isn't it? And you're both eating the same stuff, and you say, So desu ne. It sure is. <laughs> Hanasu. Hanasu. To speak, as in Nihongo or Ego. Hanasu. Neru. 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 Sleep. 
sleep. Yeah. <coughs> then you go to study. To study. 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 Thank you also, dear. Yomu to read, right? Yudu to see or look at or watch. Yes, it's any of those three meanings. Japanese doesn't differentiate those the way we do. Kyo is today, right? Toyobi Saturday, yes. Earth Day, according to this, because the dole is the same soil kanji that we've seen in the radicals. So it's like soil day or earth day. Hambaga. Everybody figured that one out, right? <laughs> School is school, yes. Tomorrow. Hi, Ashta is tomorrow. Is that like Mata? Yeah, Mata Ashta is like see you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, home. Yeah is home, house. Yes, yet. Not to be confused with yet, right? Or egg. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Right? Everybody knows that one, right? Itsu. <laughs> itsu. Itsu desu ka? When. Yes. Itsu desu ka? Asking when is it? Itsu. Zashi. Magazine. Yes. Terebi. Television. Television. Hi. Ongaku. Music, yes. And the kanji for this one are interesting. It's sound, pleasure. Pleasurable sound. Makes sense, right? Any suit? What it sounds like, right? Ocha. <laughs> tea. Hi, Japanese tea. My bun. Anybody? Uh, every night, yes, my bond. Yeah, my is every, bond is night. Boro is. Anybody? Today. Uh, ichiji goro, yeah, at about. So at about a certain time, like ichiji goro, at about one o'clock. Okay. Shumatsu. Shu is week, matsu is end, weekend. therefore shu matsu is weekend. Right. Shu matsu. <coughs> zen zen. So for example, zen zen hanashimasen. So and so doesn't talk at all. Okay, so it's like none at all, not at all. Zen zen tabemasen. Doesn't eat at all. So like if there's something in a particular food that you just can't stand, you never eat it, that food, o zenzen tabemasen, would be a way to say, I never eat that food. Yoku? Anybody? Often. Taitei. Right? Anybody? Usually. Usually. Yeah, Taipei is like 90% of the time. Um, Okie dokie is more like 50 50. Dou desu ka? How is it or how about? Yeah, so if you're suggesting an activity like tennis, tennis wa dou desu ka? How about tennis? Like you're suggesting, you know, you're trying to figure out what to do for fun, and oh. one person says, tennis wa dou desu ka? How about tennis? Um, also, you can, you know, like if somebody just tasted the first bite of your cooking, do desu ka? Oishi desu ka? You know? How is it? Is it delicious? Okiru? To get up, to wake up. Hi. Kuru? To come. Hi. 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 
Hi, Hyakumai. Right? Remember? One million. Yeah. One hundred ten thousand, right? Hyakumai. What's this one? Hachiji. Hachiji. Hi. Yoji. Or Yoji. 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 The square four sided symbol is also the number four. So that's a way to remember that one. Yoji. Kyuji. Kyuji. You don't pronounce it Q normally with G. It's Kuji, right? Q by itself, yes, but Kuji in this compound. Kuji. Goji. Goji, right? Me, me.
Zashi, they're saying, uh, Zashi o yomimasu. Hi, Zashi o yomimasu. Okay, so she's reading a magazine. Or she will read a magazine. Right? Zashi o yomimasu. Right? Ichiban Horu-san. She's listening to music, right? Honkaku. Ongaku o, and then what's the verb to listen? It's on the board still. Kiku. Right, so change it to present tense positive. Hi. So the whole sentence is. Ongaku kikimasu. Ongaku o kikimasu. Kikimasu. Hi. Ongaku o kikimasu means she will listen to music, or she habitually listens to music. Hi. Ja, Oruzan. She's gonna play tennis. Tennisu o shimasu. There you go. Shimasu. All of the sports and games generally take the verb shimasu in Japanese. You do sports and you do games as opposed to playing them. That's an American idiom to say that you play a sport or play a game. Is shimasu Yeah, shimasu is suru. Suru. Suru, shimasu, the irregular one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so tennisu o shimasu. Sanban, she's going to eat a hamburger. Okay, so. Hi, Hamburger, Karimas. Okay. So, Prendon-san, she's 
going to drink coffee. Coffee or no mask? Hi. He's going to watch TV. so far? You see how that structure works? Okay. Now let's look at the second structure, part B of this same segment on the next page. They're adding the place to the above sentences. And what I want to highlight for you is look at the example. What particle are they using with the place? Enclosure. No, what particle oh, are they sorry. using with the place? Dead. Dead. Okay, so when you're talking about doing an activity at a certain place, you're already in the place and you're going to do something there, debt is what you use with the place. Okay, so can we get Cody san to read the example again? Okay, so Toshokan de Zashi wo yomimasu. So if you turn back to the previous page where we just came from, you can see that they're using zashi again, and now they've added in library, right? So it's the same pictures, they're just adding another piece to the sentence. We're building a longer sentence, piece by piece, okay? So toshokan de zashi wo yomimasu. Okay, so shiora-san, ichiban. She's going to listen to her music at home this time. So it's a uchide. Hi. Uchide, ongaku wo kikimasu. Ja, Jamie san, she's going to play tennis at school. Tennis o. No. Tenny Soshimas is correct, but where do you put the place with the debt? Remember, the verb is always at the end in a Japanese sentence. So where does the place plus debt have to be? before the end, right? Gakusei. So, gakko. Gakko. De. De. Yes. And then, you have the rest of it, right? Tenisu. Tenisu. Shimasu. Yeah, there you go. So, gakko de tenisu wo shimasu. Just the reverse of English, right? We would say she will play tennis at school, right? They do school at tennis o play, right? Mm -hmm. Truly the reverse, isn't it? So, gakko de tennis o shimasu. Okay, ken san, sanban. She's going to eat her hamburger at McDonald's, which is makudo. Makudo. Hi. So, Hamburger uh, oh, tabemas. Okay, you're doing the same uh, thing. So or, I'm sorry. Where do you put the place? Uh, before. Yeah. Right. So, ham, uh, ham, ham. Place hamburger. first. Or, I'm sorry, place first. Yeah. 
Could you? I I was focusing. On, I should. Makudo de Hambaga O Tabemas. Hi, that's it. Yeah. Makudo de Hambaga O Tabemas. Sorry, I was. So that's okay. You, you gotta get used to the idea that the verbs always go at the yeah. end. And that's an adjustment for English speakers, right? Okay, so Makudo de Hambaga O Tabemas. <coughs> Okay, Yongban, Kohoru-san. Kisa ten de kohi, kohi o nomimasu. Hai, kisa ten de kohi o nomimasu. Kohoturi-san, Goban. Uchi de terebi o nomimasu. Hai, Desumi-san. Daigaku de nihongo o hanasumasu. Hai, i いいですね anyone have questions about that okay so your basic structure is going to be place de object or verb so like this lists the time too would that work the same way if you were saying yeah time, you would place? you would stick the time in even before the place usually if you were doing place and time like if you were trying to say both how would you do that put the time first with its own particle so when you do Time first. Day again, or is there no, time? there's a different particle. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, before we get into time, we're actually going to talk about a second kind of place in sentences. Okay, because doing an action at a place is one thing they're showing us how to do in this lesson, but they're also showing us how to do place as a destination. as a destination and then a destination verb okay this over here you could call an action verb it's an action that doesn't involve traveling right verbs like tabemas okimas um, mimas yomimas nomimas Kikimas, those are all verbs that can take direct objects, right? Well, not okimas really, but some of the other, the ones that can take direct objects, you can do o with kikimas, right? O nomimas, o yomimas, o hanashimas, o tabemas, o mimas, and o Shimas o benkyo shimas. Those all, I think, I just noticed that. Shimas. Shimas. Okay. okay, so all of those that I marked can take o. And by the way, it's marked in your textbook too. Okay, it's in, in your um, vocab list. They tell you which particle to use with certain <coughs> verbs. Okay, so these are verbs that can take direct objects, right? So you can, and if you think about it, the verb is acting upon the noun that you're putting in front of it, right? So like, ongaku o kikimas. The listening is being done to something, the music, right? Yomimas, zashi o yomimas. The reading is being done to something, the magazine. Make sense? Hambaga o tabemas. It's the hamburger that's getting eaten. Right? Does that make sense? So that's what kinds of things take O. Okay? Now with a destination and a destination verb, we're talking about going to a place. That's your destination using ni or e, and then one of three verbs that we've learned so far. Kaeru. Iku and kuru. So you can say, for example, gakko ni kimasu. 
I'm in school now. I'm talking about what I'm going to do next week. I'm going to come to school again next week. Gakko ni kimasu. Or gakko e kimasu. This is the particle e. Remember we talked about particle e? Now we finally get to use it if we want to. Okay, so gakko e kimasu or gakko ni kimasu. Either one. Okay, you can also use like kaeru is for returning home. So uchi ni kaerimasu. Okay, and then if you're going to someplace, let's say you're on school now, but you want to go to the post office. Yubin kyoku e ikimasu. Or yubin kyoku ni ikimasu. Okay, so if it's a physical location, you can use ni or e. They're somewhat interchangeable. The only time you could not use e would be if your destination is more of an event like a party or a concert, not the place where that thing is being held. So, like if you're going to the King Center, King Center ni ikimas or King Center e ikimas, either one. But if the concert is being held in the King Center is what you're talking about as your destination, konsato ni ikimas, you wouldn't use e there. Okay. But you don't have to worry about that too much for now because they're giving you just physical locations to use as destinations. So, um, so let's look at C. We're actually going to save time for another day, but we're going to look at C and we're going to practice this differentiation between doing an activity at a place versus traveling to a place. So, example for part C um, who read the last one? You did. So, Brandon san So, the example going to the post office. Yubin kyoku ni ikimas. Notice the perspective. We're closer to Mary, and she's going to the post office, which is in the distance. Okay? Um, same thing with Ichiban. Um, Jared san Oh, so, um, so she's going to the library. Uh, so she'll come to me. I feel like I've lost it. Okay, Toshokan ni, so and then the verb to go would be? Um, ikimasu. Hai, that's exactly right. So, Toshokan ni ikimasu. ikimasu. Hai. Okay, now the next one for Julianne is from the perspective of somebody who's at the school and we're waiting because Mary's going to come to where we are at the school. So she's going to use Kimas, yes. So the difference in um, Ikimas and Kimas in Japanese is a little different from the way we use them in English. It's based on perspective of the person speaking. So if I'm here and Julianne's over there and I want her to come to where I am, I would use kimas to ask her to come over here. And if she's answering, okay, I'm coming, she would actually say, hi, ikimas, I'm going to where you are. Okay, so from, from that perspective, the person who's gonna do the moving from where they are to where they've been called to is going to actually say ikimas. The person calling them would use kimas in their request. Does that make sense? Kimas is towards the speaker. Ikimas is away from the speaker. No. Other kimas. The speaker is using it to say, "Please come to me." Okay, or come to a place where I am. So, for example, we're in school now. We're talking about when. You know, what you're going to do on Monday, you're going to come to school again. But that's so, gakko ni kimasu, because we're here now, and you're going to come here again. So, gakko ni kimasu. Okay. But if you're talking about where you're going to go after this, after school, maybe you're going to go to work, so you would use ikimasu to talk about, you know, like you're going to Walmart or something. Walmart ni ikimasu. That's where you're going to go. But if you're in Walmart when you're talking about 
were coming to Walmart again for work or whatever, you would use kimas and that, at that point. Does that make sense? I know it's a little bit confusing. You're going to have to listen yeah. to the recording. So you're yeah. saying you're yeah. coming to where you are tomorrow? Yeah, so if you're in a location and you're talking about I get what you're coming saying. to that same location, you're going to use the verb kimas to talk about coming to a place where you currently are. It feels a lot like kore sore. Yeah, it's kind of like the kore sore are stuff. Ikimas is going to be used for talking about going to a place that you currently are not. So right now we're in school, right now we're in this classroom, so if you're talking about going to the library after class or the language lab after class, you would use ikimas because you're not there yet, right? But let's say you're in the lab and you're talking to your classmates and, you're talk and they're talking about, well, when are you coming to the lab next? Uh, I'm going to come to the lab again on Monday. You would use kimas in that sentence structure. So in, in some of these, it is similar to English. The, the major difference for English versus Japanese is that, you know, come here, okay, I'm coming, would be the English reply, right? Okay, I'm going, would be the Japanese reply. Okay, does that make any sense? So, okay, kimas is just for a place you currently are, ikimas is for a place that you are not, not at yet. Yes, okay. right. And kairimas is always specific to a place where you belong. Okay, so if you're coming back from Japan, America ni kairimas. If you're coming back from New York, Florida ni kairimas could work. If you're coming back from Miami, Melbourne ni kairimas. If you're coming back from school to your house, uchi ni kairimas. You would not use gakko ni kairimas no matter how many times you've been here before because you don't actually live here. You don't have a bed here, you don't sleep here, this isn't your home. Okay, so even if it feels like it sometimes, this isn't where you actually live, so you can't use kairimas to come back to school. You can use kimas or ikimas for traveling to school, depending on where you are when you're talking about it. Okay? And then, you know, when you're talking about returning to a place where you actually sleep at night, that would be kaibimas. Okay? Or a place that you consider home, even if home is sort of the general, like, that's my home country because you're an exchange student and you're living in another country right now. Okay? So I want to get through the last few of these. So. Julianne, did you do yours? Yes, she finished yours. Uh, so, Sanban, Hori san? Kisa ten e kimas. Okay, so Kisa ten e kimas, right? Make sure you're pronouncing it e, not he when it's a particle. Okay, Kiara san, Yongban. So, she's returning home, so that's. I'm super lost. In okay, I'm like super overwhelmed right now. Okay, so. <laughs> Home would be uh, Ochi, yeah, Ochi, et or ni. And then the verb to return was Kairimas. Oh, okay. So it's Kairimas. Okay. So Uchiya Kairimas or Uchi ni Kairimas. Make okay. sense? Uh, eventually it will. Okay. I just, I need some okay. time. So like okay. internalize and yeah. Okay, Jamie san can you finish that last one? Go on. America ni kai kai di mas. Hi, America ni kai di mas. So you can see in the picture, she's leaving Japan. She's on a plane. She's going back to the states. So America ni kai di mas. Okay, and I believe this is recording, Sierra. So you'll be able to re-listen to it also. That might help. Yep. And you probably will hear my internal screaming from your phone. So, um, does everybody <laughs> feel like they kind of have an idea of how to put these together? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's there. Question? I also noticed something on one of my ones that I said about Nihon. Yeah, it also says return to the Nihon. So, she's coming to the US. Yes. So yeah, she's the American, American like, Yes, it is. So yes. Is the, the Hon part yeah. of Nihon means origins. So, sun's origin, land of the rising sun. 
It's also the phone for book. Yeah. How phone for book ended up being the same kanji that's phone for origin, I'm not sure. They're pronouncing like a theory of the I know that it's truly the same kanji as well as the same pronunciation. I think the origin might just be the fact that in Chinese, that same kanji is used as a measure word for talking about how many volumes, how many books you have. So I think that somehow or other, the measure word for books and the actual word for books got conflated somewhere in history and Japan adopted the, the other one. <laughs> Because in modern Chinese, um, there's a different kanji used for books. But if you're talking about, I have one book, one book, two books, three books, four books, the measure word they use for that is the same kanji as home. Okay, Me measure word is a concept we haven't covered yet. But think about like a slice of bread, two slices of bread. All right. You know, versus you know, you wouldn't ask somebody give give me a bread. <laughs> right? Unless you want the whole loaf, right? <laughs> but if you're just asking for one piece, one slice of bread, you slice is a measure word. Okay? You know, just like a piece of candy. You wouldn't necessarily say, give me a candy. You would say, give me a piece of candy, probably. No, no one's giving me a candy. <laughs> <laughs> well, to illustrate the concept of measure words, you know, Chinese and Japanese both use measure words much more extensively than English. English has certain things like slice of toast where we still habitually use the measure word. We have other places like candy and coffee where people have stopped, we've started dropping the measure words, right? Instead of ordering a cup of coffee, give me a coffee, right? That works in English, it doesn't work in Japanese. <laughs> What's that? Isn't that a word for candy, Ame-chan? Ame is candy. Chan is like a community for thing. So calling somebody Ame-chan is like calling them cute little Miss Candy or something. I know that specifically the nouns. I like just read about this on the blog by a Japanese person. Yeah. But apparently, like, Ame-chan as the noun for hard candies is like a specific, like, Kansai dialect.